he never questioned or doubted God's promise. Rather, he was strengthened in faith and gave glory to God, fully persuaded that God could do what change and so many organizations seem to be, well, I don't want to say outdated because no women's organization anywhere can be outdated, just maybe not involved enough. Well, it's certainly nice to see you yourself so involved. Mrs. Cloudill? <laughs> Miss Thunder, please call me Catherine. Very well. Catherine, I was just expressing an impression. I think everything that the Catholic daughters do is absolutely wonderful. I was just thinking that maybe it could be a little better. It could be diversified some of the activities. Catherine, we observe protocols at our meetings. If you wish to speak, and I say this with the greatest respect, after all, you are our pastor's wife. You need to wait until we get to that point on our agenda. You understand, I'm sure. Naturally. I'll wait till then. Thank you, Catherine. Now, ladies, as usual, after we have had determined quorum, we shall all rise and intone our hymn to the Blessed Mother. Oh, look at the time. Where does it go? <laughs> I guess we can't listen to you tonight, Catherine. <laughs> but now you keep all those ideas in your little head, and who knows, maybe next time we can hear a few of them. What did they call? Say who? The Chancery, Monsignor Halligan. Oh, uh, about nine, I think. No clues to the reason why? Not a clue. It's never good news. Maybe they want to appoint you bishop. I don't think the church is that ready for Catherine yet. God made the world in six days. On the seventh, he rested. That is why we have a day of rest, to praise our Creator. Others says that's gracious hogwash. That's not very Catholic. He's an atheist. But my mother is a believer. She's a member of the Catholic Daughters of America. Oh, a believer? Yes. I think it's true, but not quite. It's just a way to show us God's might. He could have created the world six days, if he wanted to. Like a sort of fable, you have to look deep into the words. It's not a fable. It's an extended metaphor. Wow, interesting insight. Well, my mother says that we must believe the Bible as it's written, or we'll burn in hell. I don't get it. Well, a lot of religious documents are written this way, across all cultures and religions. Written like what? When you were three or four, did your parents tell you exactly how you came to be? I assume by now you know that long-legged birds were not involved. It's not exactly how it happened, but it kept it simple until you could understand better. Think of St. Paul's words. When I was a child, I used to reason as a child. When I became a man, I put childish things aside. Now, apply that to understanding creation. At first, you weren't clear. But now you are, right? It's more or less like that. Without the stork flight.
accused of sexual molestation of a former prep school student for the James Scott. Troubled. Have you ever noticed the nameplates on the pews in church? Yes, with the names of the contributors. Half of them are inscribed with the Sunder name. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Lady Gertrude. <laughs> Her name carries a lot of weight in this diocese. Apparently, to the bishop, money is thicker than scripture. She's complained about you to Bishop Cosgrove. Me? What did I do? Oh, wait. Uh, this isn't about doctrine class, is it? I swear that woman uses incense pyres to relay gossip. She thinks you're trying to unseat her in the community. Depose her from her throne? How could I do that, and why would I want to? Think back. She had the courtesy to invite you to a CDA meeting. She says the first time you pretended to be bored. Oh, I couldn't pretend to be that bored if I tried. It was a Tupperware party for church ladies. Oh, and I didn't see what all of that had to do with real community issues that are really important to Catholics. It's not your place to decide what's important. It's their organization, and they contribute a lot of money. Oh, it's a sewing circle for terminal blue noses. It's really not your business, Catherine. I can't believe you're being so snobbish about this. Snobbish? The church needs to be more engaging. Oh, and that's what you said you were at the second meeting. Engaging. Oh, now I see where all of this is going. Oh, she's not worried about the state of the church. She's just jealous. And I have no intention of stealing away some little church group of hers that should have died out with the Inquisition. Catherine, this is my job. My life and yours. Oh. Not your crusade. Be careful whose toes you step on. Oh. I'll remember those words, Father Claudio, and you remember that I am not something that you rescued from some mousetrap. Oh, and how could anybody stay off of that woman's toes? Her feet are a yard long. Good morning, Father. Oh, Father? Father? There's something that Catherine needs to confirm. I forgot to tell her this morning. It's an invitation to the... Would you call our work? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Catherine Leitner to Claudio. What kind of invitation? The who? I've never heard of them. Do I need to go to confession? You're too quick to mock our religious practices. It borders on sacrilege. Not if I mean it. I already forgave you. I just forgot to tell you. I'm just sulking and acting like a kid. Kids are okay. I can handle kids. But not too many. Just a few. I'm sorry. I overreacted. So did I. I still don't agree with Gertrude Sunder's take on what I was doing. But I can't control what she thinks of me. Catherine, wherever you go in this parish, you're my mirror. People will always assume things. Yes, I know. Even though it's wrong to do so. I just keep forgetting. You don't have anything to be sorry about, Esteban. Unless you don't 
take me upstairs and complete this making up. Tapioca pudding. <laughs> Freshly awakened, so mm -hmm. youthful. I had a sip from the Fountain of Youth last night. Oh, several sips, and I would say it was more like this morning. Night, dawn, morning. Oh, I've really got to run. Why, honey? Oh, and tonight I've got a meeting, some church group. Which? I don't even remember. Oh, um, the Forward to Christ conference? The what? When did they invite you? A few days ago. Angela set it up for me. Well, you still have time to back out. What? Why would I want to do that? It sounds like a parish group. Not quite. They're not officially recognized. Forward to Christ, the so-called progressives. They're a post-Second Vatican Council organization that's changed into something else. It's the official church position on them. They're something else. Like the Jehovah's Witnesses? They wanted reforms that the Vatican disowned a long time ago, before Pope Paul VI. Ordination of women, recognition of sexual minorities, birth control. They made waves several years ago about the Vatican backtracking on whatever threatened the Pope. They even talked about breaking away from Rome. Well... Pressure for change is what brought you and me here. Still, you're right. It does sound like some radical ideas for a not-so-progressive church. You know, maybe they just want dialogue, not to turn the church upside down. I don't know what they want, Catherine. All I know is the bishop's position on this, and it wouldn't be a good idea for you to go. Not even to become more informed? I told you it opens the door to other interpretations. Oh, you know... When I was in college, I went to socialist youth meetings, but I didn't go flying off to Havana. Catherine, I'm asking you not to go. Esteban, I'm asking you not to ask me not to go. This is not a game. Of course it's not, so stop running interference for the bishop. Just think about it, Catherine. You too. Maybe you'll decide to join me. Would you give me a hand here? Hello, this is Catherine Leitner de Claudio. I need to make an appointment to see Dr. Mertz, Dr. David Mertz. Are you going or not? I don't get it. I don't get it. I think I'm too old to understand these things anymore. And again, I never married a priest. And your father, I uh, think, yes, but anyway. You argued over it and you don't even know if you want to go to the darn meeting. It's not what we argued about, Mother. You might all that stress could cause him to lose his ejaculatory <laughs> indulgences. Time off from purgatory. The Vatican doesn't call them ejaculatories anymore. Oh, God. If that man had known whom he'd married, he'd have never laid eyes on you. <laughs> A terrible thing to say. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. You do seem like such a nice couple. Once you get used to the idea of a married priest, his great looks, his beliefs, your beauty, your intelligence, your stubbornness, that's what I meant. But room, it was an explosive formula. And you love each other so. You 
do still love them, don't you? More than I ever knew I could. And this episode will work itself out, you'll see. It's not what I'm worried about. Well, of course not. You shouldn't be. You'll talk it out. You'll reason it out. I'm pregnant. You'll take a... Holy crap! Pardon me. Are you sure? Oh, hey, I'm so happy for you. This is wonderful news. Well, Douglas Sabon, well, I was planning on surprising him this evening. But now I'm dreading going home. Pardon me, aren't you the priest's wife? I'm married to a priest, yes, but my name is Catherine Leitner de Claudio. Yes, I'm sorry, I meant no offense. None taken. Can I help you with something? I'm not sure, but I would like to talk with you. I'm Judy, Judy Zalkin. Pleased to meet you, Judy. If this is church business, I... Not entirely. Okay. Could we sit out here a moment? I don't know if I have time Please, it will only take a moment. It's a matter only another woman would understand. Fine, then. This may sound strange to you, but please hear me out. I have two children. This is Andrew. He's 14. And this is David. He's 12. Handsome young men. They are. And sweet. I live for them. You sound very proud of them. I couldn't be more so. I'm sure your husband is just as proud. Their father doesn't live with us. We haven't seen him in almost three years. Oh, I'm sorry. He abandoned you? He never was at home all the time. His job made our relationship unusual. He worked in a different city, but he came to visit regularly until he was transferred permanently. We have never seen him again. I'm sure that was very rough on your children, and you too, of course. I don't matter in this. I knew what I was doing. But if I had known what it would do to your children, I never would have been so stupid. You see, Mrs. de Claudio, I'm Jewish. My children's father is Catholic. Oh, an interfaith marriage. I like how you put it. It sounds less unpleasant. It was more a faith discordant arrangement. I take it you weren't married. We couldn't, even if we wanted to. He was already married? No. Well, in a way, I guess you could say he was. Albert. That was his name, Albert Gorman. Oh, you sure had a problem then. If it had been my problem alone, I wouldn't have cared. But our children miss him terribly. They need a father. And he and I both made this mess without realizing how horrible it would be for innocent children. Evidently, you never considered any type of prevention? Albert was against it. Wait, he was against... Birth control? Well, you could have... Oh, Mrs. De Claudio could have, should have. What difference does that make now? Yes, there were contradictions, but so was our entire history together. Only our children made sense. I found myself making up stories about his job so that our children would not be confused. I feared their judgment. My family has abandoned me, and I finally had to tell our boys that their father had left for good. We're alone now. I'm so sorry. I wish there was something I could do. Maybe there is. Maybe you could talk to your husband. What could he do? Maybe he could talk to Albert. Coming from a priest, someone who's married and can talk about family. But, Judy, it, it's hardly the same. Why? Because the church won't make our union legitimate? No, because your circumstances are different. You and your children certainly have a right to demand responsibility from this Albert, of course, but there are other factors that make it more difficult. I'm not taking sides, believe me. Funny, for a minute there. Mrs. De Claudio, Catherine, maybe with time you'll understand. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time. Tell you what, I'll tell my husband and I'll leave it to him. How about that? I can't expect any more. Thank you for kindness and your patience. Don't beat yourself up so much. 
everybody makes mistakes and you've proved to be the better person. You're raising your children, taking responsibility when everybody else turned their back. Then why don't I feel any better? You should. Listen, Judy, I really have to go, but if you ever need to talk to somebody, call me and I'll see what my husband can do. Thanks for listening.